Uh, this is kind of called wild posting. Uh, that means you don't ask anybody's permission to put up your paper, but uh, if anybody doesn't like it, they can tear it down. But I'd look for uh, abandoned barns. Gotta stay away from telephone poles, though, because the power company always uh, objects to that. But uh, the guy does come along, I square him up with a couple of tickets, but the idea is, at least for a couple of days, somebody might see your message. Don't y'all tell anybody you saw me do this now. It's a hot day today, but it'll be a hot time in the gym tonight. It's gonna be quite a match. WWF champion, come to the Anastone, Alabama, show the kids, and still I have a lot of feeling, and I still I care about my real wrestling fan. And the reason I get a couple bucks for charity, but Aaron Sheik doesn't need it. Oil man, Persian gold, the money is not the point. The point is, I just want to tell American kids, don't take drugs, and go pray, and go mosque, and do practice, and pray to God, to you be like the whole champion, Aaron Sheikh. If I make it from 10,000 miles to I come to the USA, all American greatest wrestling country, to I get my gold medal for pro and amateur, and I think I can teach the young generation, go practice, go pray, and dinner good, and sleep good, don't smoke, don't take the drugs, to you be champion like Aaron Sheikh, and I love and God and Jesus gonna help you if you want to. Ya Allah, Ya Muhammad. Anything else? Early in my career, you know, I was I started out as a wrestler just like everybody else. But, you know, I, I figured out pretty soon that it didn't take, uh, the guy that had the ring is the guy that always got the work and he always made money regardless because everybody in the business knows that if you don't have a ring, then you don't have a show. You can always get another wrestler. But about, Oh God, eight or nine years ago, I had a big uh, knee injury, cost about $17,000 to have repaired. And me being a college boy, I figured out real quick that it wasn't worth the, the, the risk, so. get back in the ring and they keep saying you know really you should and all this kind of stuff and especially these in these small towns because you know the bad guys come out here and they do all the stuff and I was always a good guy and, uh, and they say man you really need to come out brother because we need to help because you know they think that you're like a sheriff you're gonna come to town and straighten everything out and uh, I don't know you know there's some times that I want to but most of the time I just won't do it This is a good customer. This is my girl. She usually, we usually have to kid each other for a little while. About oh, so many hamburgers and everything, don't we? But uh, she eats with us, and uh, I think it'll be good to her. And 
a lot of folks don't know the background of me here, the soul. They just see the Frank that's always good to them and treats them good, and if they ever have a problem, we do that. A lot of them just, just come in and have a good time and see me and sit down and eat, then it's been good. And then when I get over there on Saturday night, I think about all that, and it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, all you eat in there, Red Nixon, South Alabama! What you gonna do, you big fat cop all night? You go on my week! Never seen Frank wrestle, but I, I remember him being on TV. My brother used to watch wrestling all the time. He was on TV. I remember the flame, and that's what he was. Hey, when I come to Jazz, we put this bar in. We've, we've updated some things for our senior people that eat here. This is a senior store, and we have a lot of elderly folks, and they like fresh vegetables. That's what keeps them in good health and everything. So we try to provide them with a good lunch at a, at a reasonable price because they're all on a fixed income. You see that giant up on me up there? I'm going to see them right over here. Folks, go to a nursing home. Ship. You got steel cables on the bottom and it crisscrosses and then you tighten them a little and then when you put the ropes on the top they're also steel cables and you tighten them and you tighten the bottom and then it holds the whole thing together. Cook with a conventional oven. This is something I put in because I tell you why. I'm a homeboy and I like cooking fresh vegetables and stuff right here on our oven and I don't need something big and fancy to cook a good home home pinto bean and cornbread. <laughs> These rings are like a Timex watch. They take a lick and they keep on ticking. This thing's had 20 guys in it. There's no rules in this. No rules. We, make, we make our own homemade biscuits. Our biscuits are homemade. And we make them with a good old biscuit mix, flour, uh, lard, and butter. And uh, buddy, I throw an apron on. I make probably one of the best biscuits you put in your mouth. And the ladies here will just about tell you that. Everybody in the, in the ring weighed over 200. Some of them weighed three or 400 pounds. It had that 20 man over the top rope battle royal. And if you, if you look at it real close, you can see the steel is sagging just a little bit, you know, like right here. Kind of goes down and down. That's for having so many guys in. Okay, if a guy were to fall out of the ring, you know, he's got to go straight to this floor. That's just a, a gym floor. You know, some, some of the big shows, you know, you'll see padding all around the ring. These guys don't have that, that benefit because their padding is way too expensive. I keep trying to get out of the wrestling business. I've been doing this for 12 years. Every time I try and get out, somebody always sucks me back in. About five years ago, I was at a bar and this guy came up and said, hey, do you want to sell your wrestling ring? And I thought, well, guys, sure, I'll sell it. But I figured he was just some, some mark who came along and really didn't have any money or anything. So he said, well, I want your truck and your trailer and your ring. How much is that going to cost me? So I quoted him a price that I thought would blow him out of the water. He reaches in his back pocket, pulls out a paper sack, and starts counting out hundreds on the countertops. Well, how are you going to get home? <laughs> I'll take a cab. Who cares? We got it. See how sturdy that is? This ring's not even put together totally yet, but every time you put another piece on it, it, it tightens it all up. Then you got these big guys that weigh 325 pounds, like Jack Lord or some of them guys. And they really work this ring out. Some folks think it's the craziest thing in the world, but that's it's just it's fun for me. What are you sweating for? <laughs> well, it's about 115 in here today. It's about 105 outside, but we've been carrying the steel in to build this ring, and it's damn hot. Well, I'm glad to see it up. So we ain't got too much time now. Yeah. yeah about another two hours. All right. Well, I'll be over at the bar having a drink. <laughs> well, think about it, will you? I began my career 20 years ago this month. Uh, my career has taken me to Canada, to Puerto Rico, to Mexico. We get, when I'm not doing wrestling, I'm bouncing heads off down in Florida and around Georgia. We get in down in there in some of them old rough bars and I have to go and take care of the law and order part of it. Well, I'm a, I'm a family man. 
I'm, I'm a working man. I work hard for my family to support them. I got a beautiful wife and a beautiful daughter. And I'm 24 years old. I've been married for about three or four years. She's uh, a year and a half years old. When I'm not wrestling, I'm a professional fireman in a big city in Alabama. I've been wrestling for about three years. And uh, I've always been wanting to do it, and I started in it, and I don't think I'm going to quit doing it. I played high school in football, graduated about five years ago. Well, it was, uh, it'll be 31 years this October I'll be in the business. And I got hooked when I was six years old in the first grade when Gorgeous George, the original Gorgeous George, came to my hometown, Marietta, Georgia. And my father put me up on his shoulders and I watched him throw gold pins and people fight over those pins. And I was hooked right then, partner. I was hooked for professional wrestling. My name is Bambi, and uh, I started wrestling professionally uh, eight years ago, uh, right after I graduated from high school. I've been a professional wrestler for 10 years. I've been all over the world. I've been all over Europe, Japan, Korea, the Caribbean, Canada, all over the United States, just everywhere. I got into professional wrestling because as a kid, my dad uh, was a big wrestling fan. And he used to take me to the wrestling matches all the time. And we'd sit front row. And, and ever since I was about four years old, I attended the matches. It was just a big deal to me. I mean, it was like the most glamorous life you'd ever see, you know. And I decided to get into it. But I'm busier now. I'm, I'm wrestling in three different areas. I'm wrestling for Smoky Mountain Wrestling up in Knoxville. I go across the state to USWA in Memphis. And I just started with Deep South down at the uh, Choctaw Indian Reservation in Philadelphia, Mississippi. So I'm making a huge triangle around the southeast, and I'm steady running. Steady running. I worked out at a fitness center where a bunch of the wrestlers trained, and one of them said, oh, you love it so much, why don't you get into it? So I went to a wrestling school, and uh, I trained there for, uh, oh, probably about six months before I had my first professional bout. And uh, I've been wrestling ever since, for eight years. just the being there because for a lot of people growing up they don't have that that feeling of of being wanted and needed and in the wrestling ring just for that short amount of time you're wanted and you're needed I think it's just the people that make me want to do it I travel all over the world I've been to Japan uh, eight times uh, I've been to India recently I've been to Europe about four different times I've uh, been all over the United States, been to Malaysia, Singapore. Um, the, the travel is just, you know, unreal. I mean, you can wrestle, one night you might be in L.A. wrestling out in the Coliseum out there, and then you might be in Chicago the next night, New York the next, Miami. I mean, it's just, it takes you all over the world. It's only 7 o'clock. we still got an hour to go before the, uh, before the match begins, and we'll be so uh, 225 tickets. And here comes another bunch right now. Six dollars. It's just like going to get cleaned up. When I get in there, all my frustrations from all week long, but I'm just dead on it. I'm dead on it. What I can swim from or do to them, and then when it's all over, I just feel cleaned out, come back like a new man. I just like to, I just like to see good ones. I mean, you know, Orange Sheet, Bob Jackson. I like to see the good ones. I don't want to see none of these jerks, you know, just off the streets. I mean, I like to see good ones. I enjoy the wrestling part of it because all the frustrations I get during the week and everything, bouncing heads, I get to get out there and these bad wrestlers think they're really bad and hot stuff. I can go out there and bounce them around a little bit and it's just an everyday thing for me. Most of the time I'm booked all the time on Friday and Saturday night, but I get down there and I get it, just, just get it going right there in the ring, just take it all out on the person, burn them up, set them on fire. I've been a fan for uh, wrestling for 25 years. I, I enjoy being in the ring and listening to the fans react to whatever I'm doing. Just beating somebody up. That's what I like about wrestling. I like getting in there and just beating my opponent. Oh, oh, oh. Contact, especially. I've always loved contact. But one-on-one -on -one combat is what I love. I thrive on it. 
I like racing because I like people getting thrown around. Some, sometimes uh, I wear different outfits, so I'm different character, different times. But uh, for the most part, I'm the uh, Power Raider. To me, it's nothing better than it. I'd rather wrestle than do anything else. To me, it's everything. Well, heat, heat probably does make it a little better. It just kind of gets everybody worked up into a laugh. I don't, you know, everybody gets kind of worked up, gets screaming, and hollering, there. I don't like that. I really get a kick out of it. I wouldn't have been doing it for 20 years if I didn't. I used to come. I used to come when I was in high school, and I guess it's. You know, I like the chess game of wrestling. I like getting in there and seeing what kind of moves my opponent might have, trying to master them moves, getting in there, trying to judge what he might do next and what I might can do to get out of it or get him before he can get me. Oh, that's what wrestling is, a chess game. That's what it's always been. And the leader of the pack at the end of the, at the, end of the time limit, at the end of the match, is going to be the winner. It's like he has somebody to cheer for and somebody to cheer against. It's kind of like life, you know, but it puts it in a little nutshell. <laughs> the competition. I like the competitive part of it, and I've always been like a, a very competitive person. I've always been a swimmer, a softball player, all kind of sports. I was raised on a farm, and a good friend of mine came to me and said, why don't you try professional wrestling because you're very strong. I used to pick 50 pounds of sweet feet over my shoulder, feed the cattle, and I've just always been a strong person, and like I said, a very tough competitor, and I just love it. I love the travel. I love going to the different countries, living the different cultures. I just like it all. I can just wrap it all up. I just love it. Okay, in Japan, uh, it's totally different than in the United States when you wrestle over there. Uh, you're not necessarily a good guy or a bad guy. You go out there and they applaud you when you win, when you do a spectacular move. It's more like the Olympics. There's no fan favorite or, or no uh, person that they, they dislike. They go out there and they watch your match and they cheer you on your ability. So if you're a good wrestler, you get cheered. If you're not a good wrestler, then naturally you're booed and you're probably not brought back again. Tokyo, the people over there, I guess you could say, uh, they're more polite. You know, over here they, they booed. I've, I've had stuff thrown at me. I almost got stabbed by a knife one time. Uh, the people over here, they're just very vocal. In Japan, they just sit there more or less and then they clap. Hey, since the first day, since the Garden of Eden, it's been our world. There's good and there's evil. You know, we're the good guy, Saddam is the evil guy. But over there, they see it a different way. Like when I go to Japan and wrestle, they hate my guts in Japan. When I come back to the States, they love me. So it's, it's all in where you're wrestling. I know uh, one year I went up to Philadelphia to wrestle, and I thought people were gonna like me. Uh, they threw bottles at me and cans and everything. I've never been to that kind of world. Everybody, I'd always been in the South, which is my home, and people always liked me. They grew up with me, they grew up watching me. But it's, it's according to where you wrestle, whether you're good or evil. I found that out. Here, you know, you're a fan favorite. The fans follow you around. They love you to death. And and if you don't, and if they don't necessarily like you, then they may boo you out of the building. But uh, it's real different over there in the other countries. We enjoy wrestling. We go whenever we can. Wrestling 20, 30 years ago was basically in black and white. Now it's in color. There's a lot more business into it. There are there are people who are, who are such athletes these days, they're doing things that people back 20, 30 years ago couldn't do, couldn't dream of doing. And I'm one of those athletes. But the, well, 20 years ago, when the guys got in there, they went for it, buddy. They went for head, they went for toe. And these days, it's resulted to more of the money and theatricals of it. Wrestling is what it ought to be, what it used to be. People wrestled back then, that's the difference. Back then, it was just either either a little man or a big fat slob. And now, up until about 10 years ago, the little man was still in wrestling. And the little man's still there, but he can't compete with a big, strong, fast man. And that's what I am. I'm big, I weigh 270, I'm six foot three, and I'm fast. I don't, you know, my man, I, I don't know what them rednecks out there, what appeals to them, to be honest. I don't understand. You know, I'd be better off if they would just stay home since you're going to get on that subject and take a bath every now and then and clean up instead of coming out here. I can't even go out the ring half the time. They smell. They don't take a bath. They have no deodorant in their house. <laughs> I 
what might have been said to you or what you might have been told, anything can happen in professional wrestling on any given night. The only thing special I'll be doing is that I'll be defending this belt tonight. And that's all the people need to know. I'm not going to guarantee a win, I'm not going to guarantee a victory, but I will guarantee a lot of pain and punishment. And anything I have to do to keep this junior heavyweight championship around my waist, that's what I'm going to do. I don't care what it is. Let's get some wrestling going. What do you say? You ready?
used to be there was a lot of mat wrestling. Now there's high flying. That's why you have so many more injuries. You see, you see people now getting injured all the time. Before, if you stay close to the mat, uh, if you wrestle a 300 pound guy and you weigh 200 and you get him on the mat, then you become almost the same size. But if you're trying to fly and use your leverage when you weigh 200 pound less, you're going to get hurt somewhere. Uh, Vader, uh, Vader's a good example. These guys try to fly with him. He grounds them right quick and hurts them. So I, I think the, the high flying maneuvers, uh, young wrestlers think it's showy. They think, so, think it'll get them a reputation. And most of the time, it just ends up getting them hurt. I like the superhero persona because I, I like talking to the kids. Uh, I think there's a lot of kids that need somebody to look up to these days. Uh, a lot of kids don't get much discipline at home. And when they come up and talk to me, I talk to them like I'm their father. <laughs> So those old guys, uh, Luthez was another one of the greatest mat, uh, wrestlers in the world. I had the privilege of wrestling him when he was 55 years old, and I was 35. <laughs> and brother, he taught me a lesson I'll never forget. So I got a lot of respect for those old timers. They know what they're doing. I never had a fan try to hurt me, but uh, recently in December I was in India, and uh, after I won the belt, um, the fans kind of run up to me to congratulate me. And over there, I didn't know their customs are different. They have the police with the, the, you know, machine guns or whatever strapped to them. And when the fans started charging me, they got worried. They thought that the fans were going to hurt me. And uh, they grabbed them and they handcuffed them and they drug them out. And I think they probably beat them up pretty bad. I don't threaten them, but they respect me and I respect them if they respect me. And I, I think they need, all kids need that these days. You don't even have to cuss at them. I have never in all my wrestling career cussed anybody. I've never had a fan attack me before. Um, I've, I've seen some attack some of the other wrestlers that they didn't like so much, but I've been pretty fortunate that the, I'm just, uh, they come up, they hug you, they shake your hand, they want to show you that they, they appreciate you. I tell them that all their, their whole family's on SSI, that's all they got going for them, they check into a nursing home because they're used up, dried up. And buddy, by the time I'm through with that, they're coming out of their clothes. Man, and when I was young, I whooped people like you. I said, well, come on, you old dried up coot. Buddy, they just want to tear me up. Man, watch me. This is Petrum up just around the head. And I took him in the ring. Whatever anybody do, I did that. But if I cannot, we give him $100 charge tonight. Look at me. Ya Allah. Ya Muhammad. I'm the world champion for this. Nobody break my record. That's a good exercise for the shoulder and a back and neck all over. That's because I'm a champion. Nobody is champion. You want to come try it? Please, come try it a little bit. Just, I, I didn't come, I didn't come this far. Yeah, just feel it. Just feel it. Pick you up. Just like on us, we'll see how much you can do. Okay, what do you want me to do? Take him up, hold it, and twist it. What? That's all? That's it, buddy. That's it. Please see what Please see how they're not bots. Can you come try it? I respect you. This you try it. Very good. God bless America. The Flame is a bad guy in the wrestling ring, and I consider him that. Uh, the worst situation I've been in is we were in. Aniana one night and I had on this little red dress like this and it cut down real, real low. And um, a real big, heavy set girl come out there and she grabbed me by the back of my dress and yanked me about three rows back. What makes a good villain? The customer or the audience makes a good villain? Common occurrence, like what happened out there tonight, it, it goes on all the time. You just have to learn how to handle it and when to back off so that they don't keep coming. Next week, I'm going to see that fat boy get his butt whooped. I'm coming. I'm bringing the people with me. I say, bring them on, big boy. You old dried up coop. Get them on out here. Bring all your nursing home buddies with you. Next week, they'll come just to get me. No, sir, I don't have too many problems with nobody out in the audience part of it. They uh, all pretty well like to be on my side, so I, I, have, I have good days and bad days, really. Because I know that somewhere in their life, there might be a shameful thing, and they say, well, me, he might know something about me. He said, my whole family's sorry. <laughs> so I have a good time doing that. The biggest wrestler I've ever stepped into the ring with was a lady by the name of Queen Kong. And uh, she is very big. She lives out in California. Know, She's I very know. well known. She's I been know. in movies before. She's uh, 
She's very, I don't know her statistics, but I think she's uh, close to 300 pounds and she's probably over six foot tall. Uh, she's like getting in there with a man. Um, I wrestled her in a series of matches. Some of them I didn't come out on top, some of them I did. She's a very big wrestler and it took a while for me to learn the strategy of wrestling a big wrestler like that. Because uh, when you first get in there, you might just get pounded to death. But I learned that she's really big and that I was a lot quicker than her. And so I had to use a lot of the amateur wrestling moves to try to get her off her feet. I had to just try to be quicker than she was. And uh, I'd say by the end of our wrestling series, I was pretty much, uh, you know, giving her a, a run for her money. So. I've got one grown child and one uh, almost grown, and uh, both of them saw so much of it when they were little that they have no uh, no uh, reason whatsoever or no desire to become involved in professional wrestling. <laughs> I said, no, forget it, absolutely not, no way. Because I knew what I'd been through, and you don't want your children to suffer the same injuries, the pain, the bo broken bones that people don't hear about. All the suffering that goes into it, the travel, the way you take your life in your own hands, just like tonight having to drive 90 miles an hour after wrestling in Georgia to get over here to wrestle. And I didn't want them to have any part of it. But when I saw that they were all dead set, they would have nothing else. They'd seen me. They'd seen me win Cadillac tur tournaments at the Omni in Atlanta with $104,000 in the house, packed $17,500. Uh, 17,500 people saw me win that Cadillac. And my boys were all there. And they were at the Cadillac waiting on me by the time I got there to drive it. So they got caught up in the enthusiasm and there was no way to talk them out of it. So by golly, I just trained them and tried to teach them the best I could. And so they'll have maybe as few injuries as, injuries as possible. Let me tell you something. They always have these Armstrongs, Bob Armstrong, Brad Armstrong, all the Armstrongs legends, all the Armstrong reunion. That's four of them. Brad, Scott, Steve, and Brian. Well, they say they're going to have an Armstrong reunion now. It may be, but I'm going to make it a barbecue reunion because I'm going to burn him up like a French fry. I'm going to set him on fire. I've got burned him up so many times now, that's why he's ugly and got to wear that bullet mask. It's funny the way that happened. Uh, the Million Dollar Man, I'm sure you're familiar with him, Ted DiBiase, uh, he came into the gym and I was doing what you call pullovers. I was on the end of the bench mm -hmm. and I was pulling over 200 pounds. Well, he just thought it was his business. He just walked by the other end of the bench and gave it a kick. Now, I don't know if he meant to kill me or if he meant to hurt me or what, but the bench flipped straight up. The weights came down, caught my nose, tore my nose off. This nose came from another part of my body that I don't really want to talk about right now. If I go out there and I can make you mad enough to hate me and want to kill me before I leave that ring, I feel like I've done a million dollars worth. Presto, the bullet is born and ready for action. <laughs> it only takes a second. I am sick and tired of you.
see anybody up there, you know who? Get him out of here. Get him out of here. This is painful. Why doesn't somebody get this old guy out of wrestling? Look at him. You like that? You like it? Look at him. He can't see where he's going, buddy. Hitting someone or getting hit by someone, it does for me what it does for a lot of the wrestling fans, and that it releases a lot of tension. First of all, I come from the oldest country in the world, they call Persia. When I wrestle as a power raider, I go out there and I, I try to show the kids a lot of wrestling ability that I have. I was a child, we run bodyguard, and plus, I was the high school chaplain, and after high school chaplain, I've been Iranian army, two years in Iranian army chaplain, and after Shah left the country, and I come to the greatest country in the world, United States of America. And when they come over and talk to me after the match is over, or before the match begins, they treat me good and I treat them good, and the kids and I have a real good relationship. Yes, I enjoy it. If it does get bloody, it won't be me. I'm a family man, I got a job, I work hard for my family, but when it comes to wrestling, I'm totally different. I get my mind set on what I got to do and I do it. 
They all about the same. They get in the way, they get run over. Hey, but I bust them, it don't matter. I enjoy busting heads, period. I've been working on a couple of moves I want to bring out tonight to show my agility and show how this big man can move around in the ring. And I'm a bad wrestler because bad wrestlers have more fun. They know how to get it on. They can do more stuff than good wrestlers and they get down and funky with the fans. Well, I can't promise nothing about whooping on nobody tonight, but uh, there's one thing about it. He's gonna know I've been in the ring with him. My opponent's gonna know I've been there and he's gonna feel it sometime next week still. As he said, he's quick, he's strong, and he's fast. I've seen him hurt his opponents. I tell you, when I first got into it, I didn't win a lot of matches because you, you learn a lot. You know, naturally, you're not a uh, you're not great at anything once you get into it. But I have went on, and I've had the had the belt for about two years now. I started wearing a mask in 1981, and it was just like uh, it's been very good for my career. Uh, I don't know if it gave me more confidence in the ring or what, but I've been much more successful with it. It's just something I know. It's a, it's a gift, I guess, God gave me to be good to folks, but yet at the same time, I can make them hate me. It, but I, I don't think I could do it without the mask. I really don't think I could do it without the flame mask because that gives me a shield to be the person I am. Yes, wearing a hood does hide some of the injuries that I might get wrestling. I just, it just, I feel more comfortable with it now, and if I ever wrestle without it, I, I really feel lost up in there. When I go to work and I'm limping, I fell off a ladder at home doing the windows. I feel like a different person when I have a mask on. Uh, if I'm in there without it, I, I, I just feel the people a little different when, uh, when I do have it, when I don't have it. And I can, I can let loose a little more when I, when I have a mask on. I love the fact that people don't have any idea who I am because I can go anywhere in this country and do anything I want to and I don't have to worry about people you know, coming up to me. Sometimes I wish they would know, but other times I just can sit back and say, well, I know who I am. It's very possible to wrestle more than one event per day or per night in the uh, Georgia, Alabama area here uh, because there are many, many, many small promoters in this area and they all want to have their events on Friday night or Saturday night, it seems like. Yes, I have wrestled with and without the mask on the same night in the same time. And if a fella has uh, it's got his schedule worked out properly, uh, it wouldn't be real major for him to work three shows per day. Has anybody noticed, not to my knowledge? Of course, you got a difference of an hour when you go from Georgia to Alabama. And uh, if you can schedule like first match in one town, main event in another town, you, you've had a pretty good payday. <laughs> My grandmother got me watching wrestling. I've been watching wrestling ever since I was a little kid. I get paid a little bit for wrestling, a little bit for bars, so I make it along pretty good. You can see I got a brand new car out parking lot just about day before yesterday in a about 250 acre farm with cattle and everything on it down in uh, Georgia. So I enjoy it. I make it I make a nice little living. Yeah.
everybody to know about them. I don't seek This is the Iron Sheik. He's number one. Exactly.
that is a, uh, a, big, a big thing to me. I mean, in every sport, you want to be the champion, you know? And, uh, and I've been fortunate enough to uh, win this belt, and it's very important to me. I like intimidation. I think that's what it's all about. If you want to be a successful wrestler, you got to intimidate, be strong and powerful, and know what you're doing. I won this belt about two years ago. They had a tournament in Japan, and they brought over a lot of women. I didn't beat one particular woman for this belt because they had a tournament, and I had to wrestle women over and over. I wrestled the very best women in professional wrestling, and uh, I won the tournament in Tokyo, Japan. And uh, I've lost it several times since then, but I've been able to regain it. When you're in a championship match, there's a clause in there saying that if you lose your belt, you have 30 days to have a rematch. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to get it back. I can do it, period. But I don't, I don't have a relationship with these wrestlers, even on the bad side. I am a, I'm a, a persona of a personal person on my own. When I go to wrestle, and I'll go there to take my aggressions out. I'll go there to, to, I go there to be the champion. That's all that's on my mind. I'm going to win. A good friend of mine, and I always loved to watch him wrestle, was Ox Baker. He taught me a lot by watching him in the ring. Uh, he was a very tough competitor, a very mean man. And myself, uh, a lot of people say I got a mean streak, but what can I say? It gets bloody. I have people approach me all the time. Uh, uh, Frank, what about that? Is it blood capsule? Well, let me tell you, I'm going to set the story straight for you. It's not blood capsules, buddy. It's the real thing. You're gonna get. You can't have a wrestling match and, and, and to to a point where everybody wants to say, "Hey, that's not real." Cause let me tell you what. I'm usually laying in somebody's lap. I'm out there by them. They want to see it. They can come see it. And I wear a mask. Been doing it for 17 years. And and I, they can see the mask cut open. They see my forehead with the scars and stuff. It's, it's something that happens. You're not going to have a good apple in every bunch. Somebody's going to want to be the aggressor and want to be the real smart aleck, and that's when you really start brawling. And it does happen. Uh, yes, I was a big fan. Uh, my hometown is below Macon, Georgia, and I used to watch Fred Ward over in Columbus, Georgia. He had all the, the biggest names in wrestling. Every week I was a fan of that TV. My career uh, at this point will probably, uh, hopefully I can get another five or six years out of it. That's what I'm looking for. Let me tell you, I'm a, I'm a heavy set person. I weigh 320 pounds is what I weigh. Uh, at one point, I was 400 pounds. What keeps me in my condition is working here at the restaurant, taking care of the customers. I'm always on the back. I'm the only manager that, I'm the general manager of this business. I work as hard as them people, and I do what they do, let them know that I can stand beside them. And that's what I like. But to stay in condition, brother, 10 or 15 minutes in the ring is like two or three hours of workout. It, it's a mental and a physical condition at all times, at all times. I work out six days a week, two to three hours a day. Well, I, I do a lot of walking, a lot of running. Um, of course, I ride my Harley Davidson every chance I get, which is not often because I'm always on the road, always. When I first started wrestling 10 years ago, I was 196 pounds of just baby fat. And as you can see now, I'm not 196 and there ain't no baby fat here. This is all I do. I stay on the road about probably 250 days out of the year. Wrestling is still the only good and bad guy. You've got your forces of right and your forces of wrong. And wrestling's the only place you find that. I mean, if there's a right and there's a wrong, there's a yes and a no, there is no gray. It's black and it's white. And people come to wrestling because they understand wrestling. They know good and they know evil. Sustained that day or that night, I pretty well just have to take care of myself. I've had some broken ribs, uh, broken nose twice, and I've had uh, about three or four broken fingers. I have never seen Frank Blades, and I've never seen him hurt or wounded at all. Um, I, I would think he would wound somebody, if, if anything. I have a flip liver. As, as of an uh, uh, honest to true thing right now, I have a flip liver on counter wrestling. Uh, in my career. And you say, well, how can you, how's your health if your liver flip? Well, I've had a uh, Birmingham uh, here in Alabama, uh, you know, several doctors 
that's diagnosed me how much lit liver, and I just haven't took the time. I want to take the time to get it put back right because then I feel like I might go down here. And right now, I'm feeling the better than I've ever felt in my life. Uh, the reason I wear this mask is because in 1982, in Wheeling, West Virginia, I had 200 pounds of weight fall on my face. It took my nose completely off. It crushed every bone in my face. So $37,000 later, I came up with this. I guess I should sue them. But it was lucky I had a face at all, and my nose is now not attached to my cranium here. So I wear this mask. You'll see it's a half mask, but it braces my nose here very well. I wear it for my convenience. I'm not trying to fool anybody. Everybody knows the bullet is Bob Armstrong. In fact, they call me Bullet Bob Armstrong now. That's fine with me. They can call me anything. Just call me when it's time to pay me. I've been quite lucky as to never have had knee injuries, which so many of my uh, fellow competitors have had. They've had a lot worse injuries than I have. When I had my knee surgeries, I was out for six weeks at a time, and it happened twice. So, you know, I'm not getting any younger, so the, the chances of me, of me getting back in the ring are pretty slim. Oh, yes, sir. I got several scars on my head here and one on my nose where it's been just I've had tire tools and everything else put upside my head. And it's really, it'll, it'll get you attention every now and then, but it's something I enjoy doing and ain't many of them able to do. I'll tell you in four letters, L-U-C-K, luck. I've been very lucky. I've been hurt a lot. I've had most of my bones broken in my body at least once. But you know, if you, if you ever get that fever, you can ask most any wrestler that's been around a while, if you ever get that fever and that competitiveness, competitiveness and hear that crowd roaring, it's just, it's just a contact sports like football. You know, football players sometimes play till somebody just says, you better quit before you get killed. And so that's what they're gonna have to tell me. Uh, I used to wrestle about years ago, and I had an accident, and I don't get to anymore, so I just manage. I had uh, uh, all my teeth knocked out, and we got into a real Donnie Brook in Birmingham, Alabama, with a mass fella. And before it was over, we nearly killed each other, and I broke his shoulder and his left, I think it was his left ankle, and I lost all these teeth, so I had to get this plate put in. Uh, a hard road? Well, yes. Uh, over in Japan, I've got my ankle broke a couple of times. Over in, uh, I think it was Sweden, I got my collarbone broke. Uh, my back's been messed up a couple of times. It's the, it's the toughest thing I've ever done, I, I can tell you that. I've had several injuries in the sport. Uh, the, the, most, the worst injury, I'd say, is I broke my arm uh, and my wrist. And uh, that happened about four years ago. I've had ribs broken. I've had a concussion. I've had a girl hit me in the ring and just completely knock me out. They had to take me to the hospital and had a concussion. It's really thing my nose sometimes get hit. If I didn't have this mask, I'd end up over here. I'd just have to push it back. It's not attached. So they did everything in the plastic surgery they could. They wired my jaws together. I had to wear a tracheotomy for three months. I couldn't breathe through my mouth a lot. But they never could get that nose to adhere back to the cranium. So this is just a piece of meat up there. And they had to go up in there with sticks and make a hole so I could breathe through my nose. So I'm just, I'm just lucky to be here. I'm really, I really am. I, I came that close to death. Just by a simple fate, I'm here. Thank God. Uh, but you know, over a period of eight years, that's not so bad, I don't guess. Well, to, for me, as far as the women, a lot of them don't take it serious. Me, I go out there, I'm 110% serious when I step in the square circle. I am very serious. Who is the best wrestler? Bambi! I think people like to see women wrestle because all, for years, all they've ever seen is men wrestle. And it was a male dominant sport. And you might see a sideshow, it's kind of like a novelty. They'd see the midgets and they'd see the women. But I think nowadays, uh, people like to see the women and get, there, get in there and do just as much as the men. And they've seen it in the past, they've seen that we can do just as, just as much as the men can do. And uh, it's a treat for them, you know, it's like the American Gladiators or the Roller Derby. They see the women get out there and they love it, you know, because I think everybody knows that deep down when a woman gets mad, she can always put on a better fight than a man can. So uh, I, think, I think people like that. I just go out there and wrestle my style, which is very rough, and a lot of the people don't like me, but I don't really care what they think. I don't think I've ever injured anybody to the point that uh, they weren't okay the next day. Um, when, you, when you're in this sport, I mean, you get hurt all the time. And usually the person that you're wrestling, once that the show is over and you're on your way, you don't even see them again. So I've read in some magazines and different things that, you know, different injuries that has happened to my opponent. But, you know, I, I, I don't go out there to hurt anybody. I go out there to win. And if in the process you do hurt somebody, it's not intentional to put them out. I know there's a lot of wrestlers in the sport that tries to intentionally hurt their opponent. 
but I'm I'm not that way. It's a sport to me. I don't want to hurt somebody. I don't want to have you know break their arm. I don't want to put them out of professional wrestling. I just want to be the best I can be. I am the best lady wrestler in the world. I can say that. And tonight I've got a title match against this little Bambi. Well, she's a Georgia girl too. And I'll tell you what, Bambi, when I meet you in the square circle tonight, you're going to go down. You're going to go so low, they're going to have to scrape you up off the mat. I don't like you. I have never liked you. And that belt sure would look good around my waist. And I sure hope you took the time to polish the belt up because, like I said, it'll look great right here. And tonight it will be there when I walk out of that ring. I'm very determined. I think guys maybe think it's sexy. <laughs>
tough on you, okay? Okay, baby. Oh, my big dog, man. No, no, man, laying on my friends. Oh. I don't know, man. That's a lot of weight. Oh. Don't worry. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. I have it deep, you gotta expand the lungs and it hurts like hell. At least you can hold that if it's cracked. Yeah. When you get them cracked in the back, it's twice as hard. Oh, man. I know. Hit those ropes and come off and just pull all the weight right now. Yeah. You, might have, you might just pull the muscle loose because it hurts so bad just to tear the muscle. It hurts just as bad as breaking one and cracking it. Yeah. At least you can put a little pressure on it. I got like one of those braces at home, you know, where you wrap around. Yeah. Best thing you can do. They don't wrap them anymore in the hospital, yeah. but it still helps. I don't give a damn what they say. If you yeah. wrap them, it helps you breathe. If you break, break them in the back uh -huh. where you can't get to them, that's how. I broke three in Louisville with Jerry Lawler. Yeah. I broke three in the back. I couldn't oh. breathe right for two weeks. Just hold that thing and try not to breathe so deep and then... Oh, man. Hard, hard you know what for this? Oh, man. That was a tough one. That was. You got that crowd behind you. You get those kind of reactions normally? Yeah, I mean, uh, people, they always give you that support, you know? Like, those really, kids, those kids are yeah. just in love with you. I tell you, I was right there where they were, you know? When I was a kid, my dad just took me and, uh, I'd sit right there, you know, front row. Same thing, so when I go out there, it's like reliving all that over again, you know? Do you, do you hear them screaming Bambi, Bambi, when, when things are getting tough for you yeah. to help you get up? That's what, yeah, I mean, it does, I mean, because it's easy, I mean, if you're doing it just for yourself to quit, you know? But, you know, when you know all, it's gonna disappoint all those little kids out there, you know? And I remember when I was a little kid, and how disappointed I was, you know? And it does, it makes you just suck it up, and even if you're hurting, you know, it just makes you try to get through it, you know? They give you the energy to continue, even when you're hurt. Oh man, who's didn't break our ribs? I've already had them broke once. You, you want us to send somebody down? Uh, I'll get somebody to check it. I got one of those wraps I can wrap it with. Okay, okay thank you. What about you think to it?
idiot down here. Oh, I'm gonna choke his guts out while I got him right here. Come to? No, we've been. Every time we've had, we've been here. 